All right, so uh, let's get ready for test two uh, for this Fundamentals of Engineering Mechanics class. We are um, going to have six problems. They might not be worth the same amount. I'll try to tell you beforehand because some of these might be shorter than others. Um, but you know the topics. Um, so I'm going to go through one example of every type of problem, but you know, just because it's not here uh, on this review doesn't mean that it might not show up on the test. So problem number one will be a statically indeterminate problem. Sometimes these... Uh, you know, we, we try to get an equation from static, so that's not enough. We, not, we need another equation from uh, compatibility, from delta L, the FL over EA. Are the delta Ls adding up to a gap? Are the delta Ls adding up to zero? Are the delta Ls a ratio of each other? Or like this, are the delta Ls going to be equal to each other? All right, so let's look at this one. We've got a concrete uh, column. Uh, it's reinforced with four steel rods. Each of those steel rods has a diameter of 18 millimeters. Determine the stress in the concrete and the stress in the steel if the column is subjected to an axial load of 800 kilonewtons. So uh, you probably don't have to draw the statics or, or any free body diagram. I think you can kind of understand that uh, the 800 kilonewtons is uh, pushing down. And so if we were to kind of cut it right here, the force in the concrete and the force in the steel counteract that. The force in the concrete plus the force in the steel add up to 800 kilonewtons. Okay, so I'm choosing to kind of combine these four steel rods into one. Uh, I'm grouping them all four steel rods together. Uh, you don't have to. You could treat them all separately. So you could say you've got four steel rods. So whatever you do, stay consistent in this part of the problem. Stay consistent in the compatibility part. Stay consistent in the stress. If you choose to do them as four separate steel rods, that's fine. I'm grouping them together. Let's all stay consistent. In the end, we will get the last answer, the stress in the steel rods. Uh, we'll get the same answer no matter how we do them. But now I'm grouping them together as the, the steel. Right? I've got the force in the concrete, the force in the steel adds up to 800. But from that equation, I don't know, is it 400 and 400? Is it 100 and 700? I don't know. We need one more equation. And so that's our compatibility. So this was statics. We had one equation but it was not enough. So this is going to be our um, compatibility. Compatibility. And I like to just kind of ask myself, oh, what does the delta L do? What does the length, the lengths of these do? Well, I think you can imagine all these lengths are going to compress by the same amount. They're going to equal each other, right? The delta L of the steel is going to equal the delta L of the concrete. So the FL over EA of the steel is going to equal the FL over EA of the concrete. All right. Okay, so now sometimes, if that's it, if that's our compat compatibility equation, uh, it actually didn't tell us the L. The, this L, you know, you, you could make something up, you could just give it something, or you could see that, oh, it, it divides out from both sides of the equation. All right. So I've got the force in the steel over the E of the steel, 200 GPA. Usually I, like, I would like to change that to 200,000 MPA, but again, as, as long as my left-hand side of my equation is the same as our right-hand side of our, my equation, I'm doing fine. Um, so, and then the area of the steel. What's the area of the steel? What's the area of the steel? I decided to group them all together, so I need the total area of all of those steel. I have four of them, uh, pi by four diameter squared. Pi by four diameter squared. All right, on the right-hand side of my equation, I've got force in the concrete. The L's cancel out the E, it would be 20, what was it, 25 GPA. So do you see how the GPAs cancel out? And then the area of the concrete. Now, let's, let's think about this. It's a 300 by 300. Uh, but I need to account, I need to subtract out those steel. Right, 4 pi by 4, 18 squared. Right, 4, subtract out the area of the steel. So that would be the area of the concrete. So from this, I kind of like to uh, go ahead and, and do as much as I can uh, simplify as much as I can. I've got force in the steel is 0 0.091513 for the 
forcing the concrete. And so then this equation and that equation, two equations, two unknowns, right? Maybe put, put that up right there. So I've got 1.0915 uh, FC equals F, the force in the concrete. Uh, so I would get that the force in the concrete, let me do it right up here. The force in the concrete is 732.9 kilonewtons. The force in the steel is 67.07 kilonewtons. All right, should I box that in? Is that what it asked for? Uh, no, it asked for the stress, right? It asked for the stress, so don't box that in. I need to take that force and divide it by the areas. Again, um, I grouped all four together, all four together. I grouped all four together. If you had treated them separately, you might have gotten the force in each still was 16.77. That's fine. Um, just be consistent. I grouped all four of them together. So now when I'm about to do the uh, stress in the steel, I would take that stress, 67. All right, so here I'm going to be a lot more careful with my units. 67.070 newtons divided by the area. I grouped all four of them together, so I needed the area of all four of them for pi by four diameter squareds. Newtons over millimeters squared are um, MPA. And so this would be 65.9 MPA. Stress in the steel. Box in it, because that is what it asked for. Now, just a little side note. If you had done all, all four separate, you would have gotten 16.77. And so you would have said 16.77, but you would have only had one area right here. We would have ended up with the same 65.9 MPA, whether you grouped them all together or treated them separately. And then the stress in the concrete would be 70, 73 to, let's see, 900 newtons divided by its area. I kind of already calculated it right here. If I had that number in my calculator, I would just uh, use that minus the 4 pi by 4, 18 squareds. I've got 8.24 8.24 MPA stress in the concrete. So that's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting how this 800 kilonewtons, uh, 700 goes to the concrete, only 67 goes to the steel, but the steel has very, much, much, much smaller areas than the concrete. Uh, the stress in the steel is larger than the stress in the concrete because the E, right? Because the E, right? It takes a lot more stress to compress right here. Well, because of the E's and the areas, it takes a lot more stress to compress the steel than it does the stress it is to compress the concrete, okay? But problems like this, You've got you need you need one and sometimes two. You need some equation from statics. That was F concrete plus F steel adds up to 800. You kind of already knew that. And then we needed another equation from compatibility. In this case, the delta L's FL over EAs uh, at, uh, equal each other. FL over EAs equal each other. I did that to find the forces. Then I took the forces divided by areas to find the stress. Okay.